right? So Steven says, can you show how to find some bull put credit spreads that shows us taking advantage of selling some premium due to recently skyrocketing IV? 15 to 30 day time period, about 45 to 65 cents per contract. Uh, hopefully that's not too tall of an order. Okay, well, Stephen, as we mentioned, you know, you've got your um, uh, different, let's just clear out the settings entirely. And unfortunately, my unfortunately, I can't really do exactly what you want to do because I'm missing a filter here that's not shown in the spread positions, but shown in single option strategies. I don't have a filter to show um, due to high skyrocketing IV. However, I could use another search to create a list of stocks to look at. But I could tell you this right now. All expirations, um, I'm going to use 12 to 30 only because October is exactly October. Uh, standard expiration is exactly 14 days away. Uh, so I want to make sure I include that in the, in the search. Okay. So we're just going to do that. Now, last week we had gone into the learning center, market activity, and optionable stock statistics. And this shows us, of course, the averages of some of the stock filters around the time in the sense where we're looking for the average, I'm sorry, across the market of things such as stock volatility, earnings per share growth, the entire optional market implied volatility is now higher. I think last week we were at 0.78. Does that sound right? Maybe 0.79. It's moved up a little higher with this week's trading activity. So the average implied volatility of all in the money, at the money, out of the money options, all expiration dates is 0.82. So although I can't use the percent implied volatility range in the bull put credit spread search, I know that I'm typically going to be looking for options that are going to be a higher volatility of 0 0.90, ones that are increasing above at minimum the average across the entire market. Okay? Now, yes, I'm going to want to still be maybe 1% or 2% out of the money to start, and you want a net credit of at least 45 to $0.65. Cents. Well, we don't cap the upside. We're just going to put in a net credit of $0.45. Cents in that case or maybe you just meant the sell option and that's fine so i'll just put it a minimum here an option bid of 45 cents as well the net credit here is going to be higher do you want a good probability as well 60 70 80 percent you know that i prefer 85 so let's just start with 75 and even with implied volatility increasing we're at a lot of stocks a lot of stocks with increased implied volatility right now other than the market movement that we've seen with the pullback in the last couple of weeks there, what else would be causing increased implied volatility? Probably because they have earnings coming up in that case. And so what I want to do in this case, though, is I don't want to trade a bull put credit spread on a stock that has earnings between now and the expiration time frame I'm looking for. I don't want that sudden chance of a stock falling 15, 20, or 30%, something I couldn't see on a chart or anything else, just because the market reacts maybe to positive earnings and the stock still falls 15%. Or they have negative earnings and the stock still falls 15%. So we use not between now and expiration. Okay. Now, Joy, Cassava, Namti, Xeon, of pharmaceuticals, and uh, exactly what you'd expect to see in this situation. Higher premiums. Uh, this, is an, uh, this is an aberration. So some of these, unfortunately, this is you wouldn't get this premium of 143 for a 247 percent return. It, the exchanges at the end of the day put a bid of 60 across and an ask of 30. You're not getting midpoint on that one. You're probably getting 70 to 80 cents on it. But unfortunately, the numbers set by the exchanges sent us an ask price of three dollars. We can't change that. Sava is pretty high at midpoint though, but that's a wide one on the ask price. So I'm going to narrow this down too because it's not helping me save time. I'm going to lower the short percent bid ask spread to be less than 50% and the long bid ask spread to be less than 50% as well on the bid ask spread difference. That cassava, a cassava one is still there. Okay, so we're just going to block that off there. Now, I'm going to take a look at chemocentrics is one I know. It's a high implied volatility of about two. Oh, these are four. Okay, October's and uh, oh, next week was two. These are at four and three. Jeez, these are so high implied volatility, but that's the ones that are also increasing at the same time. Let me take CCIX, and I'm just going to go to the research tool, Stephen. I'm going to short put research. Yep. 
I didn't give you a filter for increased implied volatility, but this is what the option has done over the life of the option. The implied volatility has been increasing, 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 and is up near a peak. It is at 90% IV range, total range of 1.423 to 4.29. And as we saw, it's about 4.09. So it did fall off from where it was. I don't know this particular stock, and I'm pretty sure it's not earnings coming up between now and expiration. I'm on the wrong one, aren't I? No, I'm the right one. Um, but let me go to research again in stock research. I apologize. Yeah, 11.8. So that's it's unconfirmed. That's unexpected. This is worth looking into because it might have a phase two or phase three FDA approval coming up. What does that mean? That means that this stock may have the potential currently at 1838. It may have the potential if it fails the phase two or phase three trial to drop to two or three dollars per share. And if that happens and all the implied volatility is gone, you're not going to be able to manage it anymore because it's going to have no premiums once that event happens, if that is in fact the case. Of course, you know, AMC is up there. Some of the Reddit stocks are going to be in this list as well. Futu Holdings has been bouncing around with high implied volatility a lot as well. And you do see some other pharmaceuticals in there, which you really have to do your research for, Stephen, in that case. But knowing the average, searching for implied volatility is above the average. If you want just your short option bid in the bull put to be greater than 45 cents, I'd put that in the option bid. I don't know if you were talking about net credit or that as well. Put in a reasonable probability. Maybe put some volume in open interest and kind of shorten these ones out there in that case uh, to the percent bid ask spread. Avoid earnings between now and expiration. You have a large list of high return positions that are extraordinarily risky because of the high IV. The IV could collapse, the position could not change, and that could work for you, Stephen. These are more likely the stocks that are going to fluctuate 10, 15% in price, even in the next 10, 14 to 20 days, could go up in your direction or it could fall against you in your direction and still result in a large loss, even though you're getting a high net credit. Okay. My testing show that searching for higher implied volatility while still looking for 80 or 85% probabilities didn't pan out because before you know it, when the drops happen, you're not able to get out at a 40 or 50% loss in the bull put credit spread. The drop is so quick and rapid on these high implied volatility positions, you're getting out with an 80% of the max loss or 90%. Now, yes, you're taking in 75 cents as opposed to what I might be taking in at 25, 30, 33 cents along those lines. But now, this one here is 250. So, but if it drops below 750 quickly, which is a possibility with something with a 400% implied volatility, depending on the reason for it, before you know it, you're at near max loss on the entire position. Okay. All right. So, that's how you'd set up the search, even though I don't have the percent implied volatility range. If you wanted to create a stock list for yourself to search in a particular strategy, of stocks that are at the highest level of their implied volatility range since the option has been released on the market. I would go to a single option strategy such as covered calls, naked puts, or long calls. I find it easier to just use naked puts or long calls, but for this we'll use covered calls since I have it here. And what I'm gonna do once the search comes up, let's clear out some of these other ones. What I'm gonna do here is clear out the entire filters that come up for this position. And your focus is on increasing implied volatility. I'm going to keep your same time frame. Uh, I think I said 12 to 25 or 12 to 30. And I'm going to look for that percent implied volatility range to be greater than 95. Now, some of them might have peaked and be pulling back, but most of them are going to be pretty high. And uh, CCTX, what did we see that? It was at 90. So maybe just I'll start with 90 for percent implied volatility range. Again, this is what's showing you where the options implied volatility is now compared to where it has been over the life of the option. So the ones that are at the peak implied volatility at this exact moment. And also we're going to keep our other original screen of looking for implied volatilities above the average right now, which we saw was 0.82. So we're still going to look for an IV of above 0.9. And to keep the numbers down, I'm going to tell the system to just look for one strike out of the money. Now, we're searching across multiple expiration dates in this case. So we might still get duplicates on the same stock. I, I could kill that by just looking at standard October expiration. Why standard October expiration? Because every optionable stock index and ETF has an expiration on October 15th. Not all of them have weeklies, as we know. 
but I'm still going to do that same thing where I'm avoiding earnings between now and expiration. Unless your plan is you don't care, Stephen, then you wouldn't check that box. And what do we see? Similar names. Chemocentrics, Champions Oncology, Altea Pharmaceuticals. Uh, Avista, I think, was on the other list. I don't remember. Um, but some of these same ones where they have that higher employee. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, one other thing you want to do here. Option bid price greater than 0 0.01. And an option volume today of greater than 0 with some open interest. I'm sorry. You don't want to see these deep out of the money ones that have never traded before and have a 0 bid and a $6 ask. That's better. Chemocentrics, Altea, on a sec. Really, fossil's that high. That's impressive. I used to trade fossil back in the days when it, you know, was in the $80 range, <laughs> $60 range. Now it's down to 12, and I know it's been as low as four, I think, at one point. I almost went into bankruptcy. But again, you see the higher implied volatilities, and then I can add here percent IV range into those results. Okay, folks, sorry about that. There we go. And so all of them, this one, this one just hit 100. Tabula Rasa Healthcare. What does 100 mean? It means that right now, this is at the highest implied volatility this option has ever been since it's been released on the market. The uh, October 30, out of the money on Tabula, Tabula Rasa at 26.65. Uh, is there a 99 in the list? No, there's a 96 and a 97. Uh, chemocentrics at 97. We kind of saw that already. 96 Innoviz Technologies, 571 out of the money, seven and a half. Not a good premium, of course, but it's got an IV of 1.315. That's 96% of where it has been over the life of the option. That's what the percent implied volatility range is. It's not available as a filter on the bull put credit spread search or I think other spread searches, Stephen, but just using that minimum implied volatility of 0.9. And that bull puts credit spread search as we saw, your net credit that you wanted, still give it a reasonable probability of 75% or higher. And of course, avoid earnings that have, uh, avoid stocks that have earnings between now and the expiration date that comes up and do your due diligence. Does higher volatility, higher implied volatility lead to a higher net credit compared to a lower implied volatility position with the same strikes and expiration? Absolutely. Does that mean it's a better trade? If it works out for you, yes. But a lot of the time it has implied volatility and high implied volatility for a reason. There is some event co coming up that could cause a drastic shift in the underlying stock price, which could result in big gains, but could also result in significant losses beyond your trading plan before you can even manage it. You might be at a 70, 80, or 90% loss of the mass loss you expected or feared on the position. Okay. All right, so that's what we would look for there, Stephen. In that case, two ways to do it. I could create, okay, so this one, I did use the percent IV range. And what do I know? I know that even though I'm only looking at October expiration, if the implied volatility is for October 15th and there's not earnings involved because we remove that, are increasing for Altea and they're moving up to higher ranges, just about every expiration will have that too in the near term, out to uh, November and out to December, they're likely all increasing as well. Same with chemocentrics, as we saw, probably the same with tabula rasa and more. I narrowed it down to just one strike so I could just get this list. Now, as before and always, you could create your own personal stock list and just write in these 15, 12 symbols and then do a bull put credit spread search just against those to see what the premiums would be and if they match the criteria you're looking for. Kind of a roundabout way to do it, but Again, we did narrow it down to just 12 positions, but we also showed how to use the straight bull put credit spread search to get close to and mimic the kind of things you'll be looking for. And then as we showed before, remember, you can add that percent implied volatility range, but if you're curious, just go to the research tool and option research. You get that default graph of option bid versus implied volatility, and you can see the change in implied volatility over the life of the option. And I think Many of the ones that we saw in that default search, Stephen, will be showing you a similar pattern that we're seeing here with chemo centrics. It's definitely not by me a recommendation or suggestion to trade bull put credit spreads on chemo centrics or high eye volatility positions with lower probabilities. We saw that the return could be doubled, if not tripled, and the premium could be doubled, if not tripled, as Stephen was looking for, as opposed to a more 
lower volatility stock with a good probability it's still at a 12, 13, 15% return. They were taking the chance because implied volatility is a double-edged sword. Higher implied volatility means better premium if you're selling into it, even though we're doing a spread position. But at the same time, there's a reason for that higher implied volatility in the stock has a better probability, lack of a better term, a better chance of quickly swinging against you or quickly swinging one direction or the other. That's what the market's gauging on based on how it's been moving. 